Welcome us to church this beautiful Sunday morning. You know the Bible told us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 that we triumph always in Christ Jesus. We triumph always in Christ Jesus. Today I want to take a detour. I want to tell us about a battle, a war we can't truly win. It sounds like a contradiction. Because I just said Second Corinthians 2.14 says we triumph always. But there is a war we can't truly win. You take note of the statement, the war you can't truly win. So the word there truly is the adjective that qualifies. You can't truly win. You can celebrate you won the battle. A battle is a struggle. It's a struggle, it's a conflict against something. War has to do with armed conflict. But let's understand as believers from our perspective. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So our arms and ammunition as children of God, as believers in Christ Jesus, is not like the conventional weaponry. We don't rely on AK-47 rocket launcher rpg we do not re rely on nuclear bomb chemical bomb atomic bomb biological weapons we have our weapons when we engage in certain types of warfare we can't truly win Our introduction today remains Luke 1 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. I want us to listen very carefully today to today's sermon. Today's sermon is a solemn caution, a solemn warning to the church, to Christian families, to organizations that are established by believers purportedly to be run by the tenets of the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. Many times we miss this mark and we find ourselves enmeshed in a war that we can't truly win. Our main passage today is a very lengthy one, so I'm going to pick verses. Because we are looking at three chapters, one of the longest accounts in the Bible. The account we are looking at covers three chapters straight. It was one of the longest events or accounts in the Holy Bible. Judges. Chapter 19, chapter 20, and chapter 21. Such a long encounter over one thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick, I've selected the scriptures I will read to point us in the right direction. And give us a preview. Of the type of war we so often engage in that there is truly no winner. Yet we celebrate foolishly, ignorantly. 
I'm going to show us from the Old Testament and I'm going to show us from the New Testament so that you understand that the same principle applies. Judges chapter 20, the entire chapter 19 sets the base for what we are going to be looking at. Let me recap the Judges 19. There was a man, an Israelite, who had his concubine, his fiancée, traveled to another part of in Israel, visited his father-in-law. He wanted to leave. The father-in-law said, stay. He wanted to leave. He said, stay. Eventually, he left. While returning, somebody, one of his servants, is a, uh, a fellow traveler, told him, let us lodge in this place. He said, no, I will not lodge in any place that is not part of the coast of Israel. Because he felt safe being in Israel. But that was where the tragedy happened. His wife was brutally raped, raped to death by fellow Israelites from the tribe of Benjamin. I want to set the background so that you understand. Like I said, the message is a solemn warning to the church. To families, Christian families. Many times we fail to see the big picture. And I'm going to tell you what happened also every time we engage in this warfare. This kind of warfare. What happens? Shocked by what happened. They demanded to have sex. He gave them his wife, concubine, fiancé, whatever she falls into, which was an abomination in Israel. We're talking about Israel, not the land of the Philistines. And they took Tom, they raped her to death in Israel, God's own country. Enraged by what happened, he cut the fiancé, the wife, into pieces, 12, and sent her to the entire coast of Israel, the 12 tribes. And when they saw and got the message, they were like, what? Can such things happen? Do not forget, Israel is truly the only nation on earth that is a family. Every, the 12 tribes of Israel were given birth to by the same person. Manasseh and Ephraim came from the tribe of Joseph. Joseph was born by the same Jacob. So they are basically from the same person. So they are all family members. The church is a kind of family. Our nuclear extended their kinds of family. So it's a Christian family. That's why I say I'm speaking to the church. I'm speaking to Christian families and Christian organizations. Those that have been purportedly established by the tenets and principles of the scriptures. They were like, what is this? This is terrible. Now, this is where the sermon begins. Of course, it was a strange occurrence. It was a terrible thing. And they gathered themselves. They summoned a high-powered meeting. They met and then they took decision. The decision was simple. The decision was not based on sentiment. That is one thing that is a killer that we need to watch out for in families and in churches today. We have been deceived and fooled and deceived by the enemy for so long. And we think we are being smart. Or we think we are showing how powerful we are. 
Then, verse 12. And the tribes of Israel, Judges chapter 20. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin. This crime was committed by a tribe in Israel. The tribe of Benjamin. Don't forget, Benjamin was the last born, the last son. J Joseph's only brother from the same mother. Saying, what wickedness is this that is done among you? What is this? When we get to a point in the church and in our families where we cannot speak the truth, we have engaged in a war where there's no winning. What wickedness is this that is done among you? Verse 13. Now, therefore, simple resolution. Deliver us the men. The children of Belial. Because scripture says by their fruit you shall know them. This act does not re resemble the act of those having covenant with God. Which are in Gibeah. That we may put them to death. And put away evil from Israel. This was the prescription of the law. God's instruction to them. Adultery and fornication, the penalties are clear that it is in the law, they all know. So they did not only commit adultery, fornication, they also committed murder. And the consequence for all of this is death. So the tribes of Israel had not requested for something that is out of place. If I was courage enough for them, and I'm going to show you something very tricky here. Many times we are on that path, and we don't know it is the calm before the storm from heaven. We take God's silence for approval. When we get ourselves engaged in shenanigans, in things that we know clearly these are a violations of the holy tenet, the holy scriptures. We do it once, we do it second time, we do it the third time. We don't see the consequence that is written in the book. And we take it for granted that the consequence will not come. Whereas... It was God simply extending the olive branch to say, turn away from it. They come before the storm. The greatest plague that befell Egypt before it happened, there was a calm. There was piercing darkness. There was no roaring of thunder. When there was thunder, there was lightning and everything, it was not the one that broke Egypt. It was the calm before the storm. There was calm. It was midnight. Everywhere was quiet. People were all sleeping and snoring. And there was the storm, a cry. The future of Egypt was gone. Yet when hail, rain, you understand, hailstone, they fell, so much noise, the impact was not. But when there is the calm, be very weary. The church should be very weary. Christian homes, Christian families should be very weary. We now live in a world where even clergy, pastors, can openly have children that are ritualists. 
They live with them. They feed them. They even receive money from them. We have entered this path. Like I said, it's a warning to the church, to Christian families and organizations. It is the calm before the storm. See how the tribe of Benjamin replied. Because we have our rationale. It was so shameful when somebody said, and a family person, that, well, she doesn't see anything wrong with them. They are trying to take back what the white has stolen from them. And this is a supposed clergy. When you see things like that, when you are reading it in the Bible, you are seeing Benjamin, you see their reaction. You see the one we do in our day today. These guys are rich ones. They murder, they keep people. They sleep with these girls. Then they use them for ritual. Remind me again, how is it different from fornication, adultery, and murder that the tribe of Benjamin committed? So that, see, the event may not be the same. The output is the same. Adultery, fornication, and murder. Ritualists. This one did the ass for fun. This one they do the ass for wealth, which is worse. And the money is recirculated into the society. Blood money. Blood money has become an acceptable money even in the churches today. It's a warning. The war you can't win. Truly. The war you can't truly win. That's the title of the sermon. But the children of Benjamin in a shock in a shocking response the children of benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren the children of israel they had become a law to themselves they had become an alternative to god's word we live in a social media aid go and find that christian discourse people don't we, we, when you engage in certain Christian platform, church, I mean church platform, when they are having discussion, you can't know the difference between when secular people gather and having discussion. Why? Because you can't see a single scripture that is being pointed out. Everybody is giving their opinion. Thank God the Bible didn't even so much as try to give us the reason why the tribe of Benjamin refused. And it is the wisdom of God. Scripture says in Romans 2, Thou art inexcusable. You are inexcusable. So that's why God didn't spend time to even capture the reason they gave. They said, no. We are not releasing them. They are our people. Why will you kill our people? Because of one person that died. And... They needed to satisfy their sexual urge. So what is wrong with that? This is a nation founded by God. The issue of sin has so much become blood in the churches today. Across Christian families, homes, Christian homes. My focus is not the world. Because we know the world is lost. My focus is the church, Christian families, Christian homes, Christian organizations. Go and find out Christ organizations set up by Christians, even ministers, deacons, title holders. Whatever thing that happens in the secular company happens. They sleep with each other to get promotion. Secretary is sleeping with the boss to retain her job. They are both Christians. They even attend the same church. Have we gotten to a point where the only difference between us and the world is that we call ourselves Christians? The war you can't truly win. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. Wow! Does that sound like what happens in our homes sometimes? 
something glaringly has been committed, an offense that is glaringly wrong. The sensible one speak out and say, this person has done this. And you'll be shocked. The camp of those that are the offenders will take exception to your correction, to your pointing it out. Mind you, it was not the other part of it. This is pathetic. This is Israel versus Israel, not Israel versus Philistines. Go and check the Bible. The time Israel has suffered the greatest of casualties was a war between themselves. Go and check the Bible. That is the war you can't truly win. The greatest casualties. Some of them, it was God who destroyed them. 23,000 in one day. 24,000 in one day. The greatest injury and losses we can suffer as a church, as a Christian family, as a believer, they are internal. Why? Because externally we are so protected. But when we break an edge, that's when the serpent, the serpent is not inside, the serpent is outside. As long as the edge is intact, the serpent can crawl in. Who breaks the edge? And they can't break the edge from outside. The edge is always broken inside. So when every time you read that portion of the Bible, this is what he's talking about. We open the door for the serpent to come in. If the serpent could come in, he would have broken it. But the serpent can't break. We always do the opening of the door. And it's when we engage in things like this. Internal conflict. Internal wars among families. And while we are doing that, two things happen. We suffer internal casualties. It is that moment we become truly vulnerable. Those are the two things that happen when we engage in internal war. As a church, men of God fighting themselves. We open up ourselves. Churches fighting themselves. Members, deacons, deaconesses. War for succession. It's a war we can't truly win. I'll give you the statistics. Mind-boggling statistics of what happened. The tribe of Benjamin suddenly rose up and said they were going to war. It was not the other tribes who said, because you did it, we will go to battle. Are you not seeing the amazing part? Release the persons who committed this crime. The entire tribe was not being condemned. The persons who committed this crime, maybe less than 10, maybe less than 20. According to our law, the law of God, these people, this is the penalty. Let them face the consequence. Do not forget, when you start the book of Judges, you were told that there was no king in Israel and every man did what was right in their own eyes. Has the church gotten to the point where, though we have the Bible, the Bible is no longer our compass. It's no longer the yastic for decisions we take. That's when you fall into this. Because if, though they didn't have king, they didn't need king. They didn't need a king. Moses led them. Moses was not their king. Joshua led them. Joshua was not their king. So the only difference was that they had removed the law that guided them. Moses relied on the law that God brought through him. Joshua relied on that same law. Suddenly, the law, which was the most important, is no longer there. It's like what is happening in the church. We have gotten to the, to the era of the Laodicean church. The Bible is still there. But men of God, women of God, servants of God have taken over the place of authority of the Bible. Like the Pope Francis thinks is some kind of a parallel or alternative authority to God's word. There's nothing like that. All we are, we are but servants. We are servants. We are vessels in his hands. God's word remains the final and only authority with which we guide ourselves. 
Jesus never said, but the pastor, when he come, he will guide you into all truth. No, he said, but the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the Allah's paracletos, when he come, he will guide you into all truth. Today, the guiding has been left to men of God, women of God, prophets, apostles, evangelists. We have gotten into the era, the Benjamin era in the church today. They were ready armed for war. You ask yourself, what happened to evil morality? Are there no elders in Benjamin? Of course they had. But little did they see what was coming. Every time we get involved in this war, we can't truly win. The losses we suffer, we can't recover from them. So, why should with the devil and the enemies spend their time engaging us in external battle when they know they are programmed to lose? All they need to do is sponsor internal war. While they are eating and drinking tea, we are recording casualties left, right, center. The church should hear me and hear God clearly this morning. Every time two men of God engage in battle, in warfare, openly, the world cheers. They want to hear it all. They want to see it all. We are breaking the edge. Then the serpent flow, flew in. They crawl in and finish off those that are half alive among us. Benjamin armed themselves ready for war. Less than 10 persons committed this crime. Verse 17 tells you over 400,000 persons were ready to fight on their behalf. So majority is not right. Majority does not mean right. Less than 10 persons committed this crime. Over 400,000. We are ready to go to war. These are from the side of Israel. I beg your pardon. Now you ask yourself. From Benjamin you had over 26,000. For a crime committed by 10 persons or so. So if you add 26,000 to 400,000. Almost half a million persons were going into war. Over a crime that was committed by 10 persons. And you now ask yourself, do you see where this thing is going? People are going to die. Politicians will start a war that they and their children and their relatives will never die in. Ukraine has been fighting. Thousands of persons have lost their lives. Families have been wiped out. Putin has not lost his, any of his family. The president of Ukraine has not lost any member of his family. But people are dying. As we speak, people are dying. When are we going to wisen up? When? As human beings, not to talk of as children of God, endowed with the wisdom of the Most High. Look at verse 18. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah. Have you ever received an instruction from God that turned out to be 
that looked like the outcome was a lie. This is it. The war you can't truly win. Israel, the other part of Israel was offended. They were the only one who asked God cancel. Benjamin had no time to pray. That's how to know the people that are in error. They have no time to pray. They don't make reference. Their response is not based on scripture. You see them pouring out their opinion. They had no time. They were set for battle. Straight up. They were battle ready. Israel had to go and ask. Which of us will go up? Should go up first? Unfortunately, the question was not, should we fight? Mm -hmm. Instead, they say, which one should go up first? Let's be careful the prayers we pray. Mm. Because what you give is what you receive. They didn't ask, David asked, shall I go? Shall I pursue? And he said, yes. Israel said, which of us will go first? So the issue of this fight is concluded. Which of us will go first? He said Judah. And Judah went. Look at verse 20. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day 20 and 2,000 men. One woman died. The same people who lost had lost over 20-something thousand men again. And the people, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array, in the place where they put themselves in, in array the first day. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until even, and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? The prayer language has changed. And the Lord said, go up against him. And the children of Israel came near again. The children of Benjamin the second day. And the children and Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah. The second day are destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel. Again, 18,000 men, all these drew the sword. Wait, who is losing? It's Israel that is losing. These are valiant men, men of war, skilled men. They are resources. The human resources are being depleted, not by the enemy, but by themselves. 20 something, 18,000, add that up. Almost 14,000 warriors have died so easily. The enemies can fall Israel like that. Benjamin mistook this. It was God extending the olive tree to Benjamin. He first gave them a big opening. You killed one and you have killed 20 something. He expected them to say no, they are not going to fight again. We first killed one and now we have slaughtered 22. Let me open your eyes. They killed their cousins, their nephews. They kill their uncles. It's one family. Is that a war you, you truly win? Mm. Now you understand the title of the sermon. The war you can't truly win. Let's put faces to these dead people. They are their cousins. They are relatives. They are nurses. They are, they are, they are nephews. They are nieces. Their uncles, their aunts. So they created. Let's say if they all are married, they just created about 22,000 widows, almost 40,000 widows. Think of the impact. The damage we suffer when we engage in internal war in the church, in the family. We really can recover from it. It was not the hand of an enemy. Even the devil knows he can't beat us. 
but he knows he can help us destroy ourselves. So that is his strategy right now. We triumph always. That's against him. Against ourselves, there's no guarantee. Then all the children of Israel, 26, and all the people went up and came into the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. We have suddenly forgotten who we are fighting. How often do we do this? We get so drawn into what we do that we completely forget who it is that we are doing it against. Like I said, the weapons of our welfare are basically our mouth, our fastings. Have you seen Christians fasting against another Christian? Have you seen a church leader fasting for the downfall of another church leader? Have you seen a deacon engaging in a fast just to ensure he gets that position and another deacon doesn't get it? How does God even survive? We are all members of his family, his household. That's what the Bible tells us. And we pray the same prayer to them. What was Israel praying? Give us victory. Over who? Over the Benjamites. Who are the Benjamites? Israelites. See what happened. The first, the second. And God now saw clearly he has given Benjamite enough rope. They weren't going to turn back. Mm. Then the storm came. And when such judgment comes, it is even fiercer when the Almighty is dealing with his own people than when the enemy is fighting you. It's always terrible. As we progress, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it again before we wrap up. God didn't open ground for the Philistines and they were swallowed. He opened ground for fellow Israelites and they were swallowed. Because it is unthinkable. It is irritating to him. His children cannot be fighting. Don't we have Christian parents who enjoy the show when their children are fighting? We do not know what we are doing. We are triggering, we are triggering a storm. When the rain falls, it's going to be more than acidic rain. He will unleash his vengeance upon his own children and clear them. They came. They offered peace offering. Verse 28. Let me skip for time's sake. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? Or shall I cease? And the Lord said, well, I have tried. Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thy hand. Even the Israelites, in all their widest imagination, would not have fathomed what was about to happen. Because immediately after that, they were the one protesting against God. <laughs> The wrath of God, when his wrath is unleashed on his children, there is no mercy. It's a terrible thing. I speak this trembling. I'm preaching this sermon trembling because too many times we have got into this place. And as we speak, there are Christian families already here. Where the Almighty has already spoken. Tomorrow, 
I will unleash my judgment. First, second, he has given them enough rope. He has tried to warn them. The laws are clear. God's word is clear. You keep doing what is against it. Because you have not received any consequence. When such consequence comes, there is no remedy. Anyone with Bible sense will know. If you are doing something wrong and it's like heaven is silent. When heaven relates, you can't be alive. When heaven responds, I beg your pardon, you can't be alive to tell the story. Has God already spoken to the denomination, to a denomination, to a founder, to a president, to a father, to a mother, to a family? By this time tomorrow, my judgment will come. I have given you people two opportunities to resolve this nonsense, since you would not, by this time tomorrow. And what happened? Mm. What happened was not pleasant. Because after the war, only 600 persons were left in a tribe with a minimum of 33,000. Only 600. Less than 2% of the population was left. 1.8 to be precise, if you use 33,000. You know the painful thing? Women were killed, pregnant, mothers, the aged and the young. All the elders who could not be elders, they all died. This was the war where God did not spare even children. Women who didn't go to war, death came to them. So, here is a lesson on leadership. If the decisions your leaders are going to take is going to directly affect you, then you are a stakeholder. You don't need position to be a stakeholder. The Benjamite leadership took a decision. Their wives, their daughters, their children didn't know it was their death warrant they signed when they refused to release those men of Belia. They all signed their death warrant. There was no protest. Nobody from Benjamin rose up and said, what are you people saying? Is this a thing that is allowed in Israel? So when we aid and abet iniquity, we have turned Christianity to democracy. Democracy is, is the popular vote. Christianity is not democracy, it's theocracy. It's not talk your own, make I talk my own. Our opinions don't count. Only God's instruction matters and counts. 1.8% of an entire tribe was left. 600 men to be precise. They are all fighters. That means in one day, they realize it doesn't matter their status, it doesn't matter their wealth. They were all bachelors. Their future died before their eyes. And Israel had vowed that nobody would take a wife. So that cause still subsists. As far as the Old Testament is concerned. Benjamin can marry from them. Do you see the devastation that happened when we engaged in this war? Who won? Did Benjamin win? Did Israel win? Israel lost. The war, you can't truly win. When families engage in battle, in fierce battle, and parents take sides instead of serving. When churches engage in battle instead of PFN, can to step in and say, we can't be doing this show of shame. The one that is wrong, discipline them. 
If an organization cannot discipline, then it is useless. This is a warning. The other part of Israel was shocked at what God did. They even subtly turned against God. They were not in protest. When we are misbehaving, we don't need to invite him. It is his family. He will come and make the needed correction. But it is better we correct ourselves. So. When he steps in, it's not pleasant. The church in Nigeria, the church in Africa, the church across the globe, Christian homes and families, denominations, you think you are a law to yourself? You are not. Let's not take the patience of God for weakness. The battle you can't truly win. Why do we take delight in fighting and engaging ourselves fiercely like enemies? It was a simple thing. The people committed a crime. Let them face the consequence. They said no. And Israel was offended. Since when did we get to this? So Israel engaged. Perhaps if the other tribe had said, Father, take vengeance on these people, those men would have died. Nobody would have been left. But you say, who is going up to battle right now? We need to. He said, Judah should. The second time. Then the third time, he said, it is tomorrow and I want to deliver them because I've given them time to repent. I've allowed thousands, almost 40,000 died this way. Over 10 useless people. Who should have died? And they didn't learn. Instead, they were rejoicing. They not took it that they were right. Do you understand? So that's why I say it's the calm before the storm. Look at Judges chapter 21. Now I told you it's one event that covers three chapters. The longest event. Judges chapter 21. 6, 15, and 17 I read. And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin, their brother. The deed has been done. What will it profit you if your brother die? What will it profit you if your sister die? If you are the one who killed him. If you are the one who killed her. What will it profit you if your children die? What will it profit you when two of your members fight and one die? Eh? Man of God, woman of God. What's your gain? Is there a winner there? No. It's the church that lost. It's the family that lost. Let's be wise. Let's not do the battle of the enemy for him. Because he knows he can't win. That's why I started with 2 Corinthians 2.14. We triumph always. That's over the devil, not over ourselves. Usually it's the Almighty that steps in when we when we not resolve, when we will not resolve our conflict by ourselves. It doesn't always end well when he steps in. Because he expects better from us. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. I tremble in my spirit because I sense the storm is here. God prophetically is speaking by this sermon tomorrow. I will deliver my judgment. There is already a prophetic tomorrow for the church. A time will come, and that time has come, when servants of God will be dying like flies. Mm. And losses will just be happening in homes, and they are Christian homes. We have taken the grace of God for granted. We are abusing his mercies. His mercies. And the children of Israel repented them. For Benjamin their brother and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. When those cursed fellows were raping and murdering that woman, they didn't know it was their tribe that they were raping out. 
They thought they were murdering a beautiful girl, another person's wife. They were actually murdering their tribe. That's the end. This is the end you are saying. That a tribe is cut off. May we not get to a point where we now realize after the battle is over, the war is over, we are realized we were scammed by the devil. Because the one who will be crying is still you. Over the death of your brother, over the death of your sister, over the death of your mother, over the death of your father. But you knew you engaged in it. Oh, man of God, you knew you were responsible for the death of that other person. Who lost? It was the, it's the church. You send assassin to go and kill another man of God because there is something you have misunderstanding. Who lost? It is God that lost. It is the kingdom of God that lost. When are we going to wake up? We malign and mudsling ourselves in the public before unbelievers and we bring the church to ridicule and disrepute. And then we are happy that we won the case. You took the other person to, to court. Against 1 Corinthians 6, that expressly warned us not to do that. You took a fellow Christian. I've been taken to court by a fellow Christian. Over an issue that even unbelievers would just sit down and just clear the case. And he ended up with shame. Because God will always stand up for the just, irrespective of your status, whether you are a Christian or not. 15. And the people repented them for Benjamin. Look at it. Oh. Look at it. Oh. I said they were stop, softly protesting against God. See it. Because the Lord had made a breach in the tribe of Israel. <laughs> He told me this some time ago. He said, you, 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 the one you are good. Do you know the one they do to me? I reach out to help and they turn around to blame me. This is one of the examples. They were the one that cried to God to say, come and help us. Benjamin has killed 22,000 of us. So. He said, hey, okay, go again. He has killed another 18,000. He said, okay, don't worry. Tomorrow I will deliver them. He delivered that. They said, you see, God has almost wiped out our brothers. He don't kill our sister. He don't kill our mother. Finish. So now God is not the one who committed the crime. This is the war you can't truly win. Let's desist. So when politicians play politics in America, in Nigeria, in Ghana, trying to subjugate one ethnic group, you are a fool. You prevent them from making their own contribution to the national growth. You are a fool. Because it is the growth of your country, of your nation, that is being impeded. At the end of the day, the progress your country would have made, they will not make it. See the energy that is being expended on targeting Donald Trump, for crying out loud. A man who predicted virtually everything that has happened and they have happened. One leader has mocked him, but the things have happened now. The war happening now in Ukraine over Russian gas. Trump said it years ago. In what they, they started playing the video now. The world leaders mocked him. German Chancellor then, Angela Merkel, mocked him. They are playing the video now. Trump was right. He predicted this was going to happen. They said it's impossible that the man is drunk. The man is crazy. Everything the man said has come to pass. See the energy US. FBI has lost focus. Only Trump is their focus now. Joe Biden doesn't even know where he is. The focus is Donald Trump. Energy you should be using in expanding intelligence, you are using it against one of your own. That is how nations fall. When they can't attack you from outside, they allow you to implode. We cannot be made to explode by the devil, but we can implode ourselves. It's the strategy. It's the strategy of implosion rather than explosion. The most effective strategy to bring down an enemy. And they said, there must be an inheritance for them. See them, now that they protest, now they go call God. God sit down for him, now they can call him. Now they are not protesting, because now the result is not clear. It's not clear to them. A tribe is gone. A tribe is gone. A tribe is gone. That's an aberration. But the Almighty knew that that was where the thing was going all along. He gave first rope. He gave second rope. Israel was already offended. They had killed their innocent people, so they weren't thinking straight anymore. Uh -huh. We are supposed to be the one enforcing what is right. How can we suffer our loss? No way. We will not agree to this. And he said, okay, don't worry. Tomorrow I will pass my judgment. Now you pass judgment. They are protesting against God. 
just the Lord has made a breach. It's not Benjamin now. It is the Lord that has made a breach. Howbeit we may not give them wives of our daughters. For the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Are you saying it? The devil couldn't have caused this harm. The enemy could not have caused this harm. Let us learn. The war you can't truly win. Don't start it. We should be wise enough to control our emotions and step aside. You are seeing the big picture. They are not seeing it. Bible says, when I was like a child, I behaved like a child. We have learned and we have seen things. Be the fool. Be the weak one. You have seen what they can't see. You have heard what they are not hearing. They want to win. Let them win. But you see, the danger then in, in that, you have saved yourself. Is not going to step in. There's no winning in this. Because he will not allow iniquity to go on. He will not step in. But I would rather not lose my people anymore. I won't lose myself. Israel I lost almost 40,000. They could have not lost one. Mm -hmm. And what God would do, he would have still done it. But because they lost, that multiplied the judgment that was going to come. So he took it out on the percentage of with which Israel lost. That was how he transferred it to Benjamin. And left only 600 person. Only 600 person. The tribe of bachelors only. Many things happened. Only bachelors in that tribe. They just woke up one day. Only men were left in that entire tribe. <laughs> Should I keep bringing out more revelations? They slept, woke up, only men left in an entire tribe. No, not a single female. So the Benjamin today you see, all the women are foreign. Not a single pure blood. So you see the effect. You can't recover from it. This war, we can't win. Let's not be involved. I'm not saying they won't bring it all. There will always be Korah, Deta, and Abira. Please, let's minimize the damage by not getting engaged. Don't engage. Don't engage. And please, don't blame him tomorrow like the Israelites are doing. Suppose he got angry and killed more of them again. I got them out, I don't come, I don't come, blame me, I mean, I don't wipe out one tribe. There's no winning with human being. Hebrews. See it now in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 12. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous. We cannot stand rebuke when we live with people who you can't even correct anymore. Christians, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers, our colleagues in the ministry, you can't correct them anymore. You are seeing the Benjamin scenario. Oga, okay, madam, you are obviously in error. Your child can be a Yahoo person. And you are having God to still pray. And you are not praying for their salvation. You cannot be aiding and abetting in iniquity. As a title holder in the house of God. And somebody is correcting you and then you are fighting back. You cannot cross the line. And somebody is trying to correct you. And then you are claiming justification that you are not a child. So you too deserve respect. Of course, that's how Benjamin started. They said they deserve respect. Unfortunately, the, those who committed the crime didn't die alone. They took out the, the entire lineage. Only 600 survived the war. But grievous, nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Did you see that statement? Unto them. So it's not everybody. That's what the scripture is subtly saying. Not everybody can go through correction. So, the ones who can go through correction, so they won't have peace at the end. Because he said the ones who exercise it, there is peace. It's, it's judgment in quotes. It doesn't end well. Wherefore, Lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight path for your feet. Lest that which is lame 
be torn out of the way, but let it rather be healed. You see, God is admonishing, let's not destroy, let's heal. That was what the Israelites said to their brother. Bring these bad men, let's heal. Benjamin said, no, let's destroy. And they saw the destruction. How do you think the Philistines felt? That they didn't have to shoot a single arrow and almost a hundred thousand persons died. Wow. Wow. Suppose the enemy invaded as they were fighting themselves. It would have been total massacre. Now this is where families should open their eyes. Why we engage in battle if the enemy joins, we are done. God is merciful. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Don't break the grace of God. Don't err in the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, thereby many be defied. It happens in churches. It happens in family. Bitterness. Somebody just, just bitter against you. The Bible says, you are a dundee. Many will be destroyed. Many will be stained because of that thing. It's internal. It's not the devil. But the devil uses it as a weapon. Look at James 4. In case you, are, you didn't understand Hebrews, see James 4. 1 to 3. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Did you see that? Uh -huh. well, well, I don't know what we just read in Judges. So God knows. That's New Testament. Where, where, where does it come from? Come there not hence even of your lust. What is lust? The difference between lust and desire is that lust is against the legality of God's word. Lust is a desire, but that desire contradicts God's word. These men wanted to have sex. They couldn't have it with their wife or their, yeah, of course with their wife, not all. We see movies we show today acted by Christians. We have fiancés, they keep having sex. A man gives out his wife. He's tempting his, his wife to a friend of his to keep sleeping. And nobody sees anything wrong with it. That's where we have got into. Even of your loss that warn your members, ye lost and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask and means that ye may consume it upon your own loss. Always focus on the big picture as I wrap up. Can I truly win without losing this kind of fight? How do you engage in fighting your brother? Engage in fighting your sister like you are fighting an enemy? I'm talking about family members. And I'm talking about the church, Christians. You attend this church, you attend this church. You guys are sworn enemies. You are forgotten that church is a denomination. The denomination it does not appear in heaven. You all belong to one family. When the father is angry, he's going to deal with the one who is wrong. But when he's finished dealing with that one, the other one will come say, why you do one? That's what the remaining Israelites said to him. Say, God has made a breach. When I, when I got to that, I just laughed. Say, say, the Lord has made a breach. It is the Lord that has made a breach. They couldn't rejoice. They were crying. But apparently, it looked as if they won. No, but they didn't win. What do you tell those women who now became widows, whose husband died during the war? The almost 40,000. So what do you tell their children? That they died over what? Men who raped and murdered a man's wife? That was what we went to war for? Go and find out what people go to war for these days. They are very stupid things. And the ones who, who initiate the war don't get caught up in the deaths. It's always innocent people that dies. I will not die for a war a stupid man started. So if you are a soldier, you should hear. There is a time to rebel. If your life means something to you, if your family means something to you, don't go engage in a war that a foolish politician has asked you to go. Resign and leave the job. Your family should be more precious to you than a crazy politician who wants to score personal beef with another person or with another tribe or with another state. You die, you die. Your family will be left to suffer. They won't care for them. Is 
Israel was the biggest loser as Benjamin was part of it. Like I said before, they slaughtered their cousins, their nephews. Only 1.8% was left. That means 82% of the population died. A tribe only had bachelors after it. The wrath of God is not a pleasant thing. Never allow sentiment to be cloud your sense of judgment. That's what happened in that Judges 20 from 12 and 13. Release these people. They have committed crime. According to the law, this is the consequence. They said no. The result could be very costly to the entire family, whether nuclear standard or Christian family, the church. Only a few men could have died, but almost 100,000 persons died, and a tribe was nearly wiped out. A tribe suddenly had only men. In Numbers chapter 16, only Korah, Dita, and Abiram needed to die. But more than 250 persons plus their family members died alongside with them. What killed them was sentiment. When they started the internal war, their wives stood by them. Wives, wives, every man will give account of himself before God. You are not a fool. You are not a robber staff. When your husband is in error, detach yourself from him. That was how these women died and their children. The Bible said the two of you shall be one flesh. It didn't say the two of you have to commit sin and agree on doing wrong. Why did God wipe their family alongside? Because when Moses said, depart from these wicked men, from the tent of these wicked men, their wives and their children stood with them. We are standing with our husband. He did the worst part. And of course, the death, they really uh, died. Women, don't become a casualty for your husband's foolishness. Warn him, sound the alarm if he will not speak the truth and detach yourself. The life of your children, your future is more important than the man who has derailed from God's way and is, re is refusing to come back. Learn. Only few persons, three would have died. Hundreds of persons perished. And their entire family died for a sin they didn't commit because they were in solidarity. You should know what you do solidarity for. This is a warning to us when your family member is in error. Because now your brother, you are, there are some persons that God can never elevate in my own thinking. Because they don't have a clear sense of judgment. They just look who? Okay, now my brother now in the quarrel with my in-law. Okay, now my brother now in the right. That was how they died along with Korah, Dita, and Abiram. Only three persons ought to have died. But hundreds of persons died. And later thousands because the Israelites joined them. And the plague went out. And God was pissed off. I've had enough of this nonsense. You won't desecrate my love before my face. And the Bible said the plague was already on. It was Moses who told them, the plague has begun. Run! Thousands of persons died. Because they had the gods to say, you have killed God's people. And God said, ah, let me kill them. You said that Moses killed them. Now you two will die. And they, and they started dying. Instantly. The battle, the war, we can't truly win. Let's not start it all. Because this war, it is God who decides who dies and who lives. When Moses, when Aaron and Miriam started it, it was God who decided who was going to be leprous. So please, what I'm saying is let's minimize the loss by not engaging. We are wiser. The Holy Scriptures, finally, must remain our only compass and yastic for our decisions always. I have spoken for more than one hour. It's a solemn warning. It's a solemn message. You can't win in this war. At the end of the day, you will blame God. Though. Just stay away. So that the offense will be less in his sight. If you engage and they batter you, they are triggering the offense. Though. The judgment is being multiplied. That's what happened in the case of Benjamin and Israel. That they had the audacity to draw sword, 
and kill the people who are trying to correct you first time, second time. They didn't know what was coming. He was giving them opportunity. He sacrificed the righteous for them. So when they wouldn't take, he wiped them. He wiped them. And they continued to suffer that thing. Saul was from Benjamin. His kingdom collapsed. Because somewhere came after judges, right? His kingdom also collapsed. Remember, he became now a law. Reuben was the least at a point. After that judgment, Benjamin remained the least. Here was Saul said, Say, Am I not the least? Is my tribe not the least in Israel? From a, tri from a tribe that was so populous, when God stepped in, he reduced them, he changed their position permanently. Let's rise up on our feet. The war you can't truly win. Hmm. Warning to the churches, warning to families, Christian families and organizations. Implosion is more deadly than explosion. We cause, we, we, we are the trigger for implosion. Let's not allow the Almighty come and say to us, it's not always good. It is good when he's settling you and an enemy, an unbeliever. But when he's settling between you and a fellow Christian, it doesn't end well. Though. 